everyone. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today I am going to dye a gradient set. Here I have 300 grams of Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn and I'm going to dye three different colors in different intensities of one tone to give us a beautiful overall semi-solid gradient set. I would love to give a huge shout out to all of the Chemnitz patrons. In Dye Pot PS number 10, I went for more of a fade set versus a gradient set. And so while I realized that during the filming, I wanted to go on and create this episode of Dye Pot Weekly right away. So let's go get dyeing. For the dye today, I'm gonna use an approximately 1% stock solution of Dharma Forest Green. I've been really into this color lately. Um, it really excited me and I'm excited to use it for this gradient set of yarn. I mixed this dye stock solution today as I was filming Dye Pop PS number 10. I'm not sure if that episode is public now at the airing of this episode of Dye Pot Weekly, but if you would like to get early access to new yarn dyeing videos, check out the Chemnitz Patreon. You can find links in the video description and iCard, and at the time you're watching this, that video is definitely available for patrons. I am pre-soaking all of the yarn in plain tap water for at least 30 minutes. The yarn is Knitpick's Wool of the Andes Worsted Weight Yarn, and it is 100% Peruvian Highland wool. In the dye bath, I have 12 cups of water. And I'm gonna add one, two, three tablespoons of white vinegar and start heating it up. I'm not sure if I'm starting with the lightest or a medium's, medium's tone, but I am gonna start with two tablespoons of our 1% stock solution. And then from there, I will be able to gauge if I want to add some more color or maybe some less color um, for the other two skeins of yarn. But this gives us at least a nice sort of starting point. And you can see that there is a lot of color in here already, so we may need to go less. We are getting hot, there's some movement on the surface. I squeezed out most of the water from our first skein and I am kerplunking it into the pot. Um, yeah, there's a fair amount of color there. We may or may not decide we end up needing more vinegar, but now I'm going to let this sit for 10 minutes and we'll come check in and see how we're doing on our color. All right, here is our first color, which I did using two tablespoons of the dye. And this looks like a wonderful intermediate color. It is definitely not a pastel, and it's definitely not super, super dark and saturated. So next, I wanna try to go for the pastel. If I overshoot the pastel with too much dye, I can always turn that one into the darkest shade and go for a pastel in another attempt. But I know I want to do less than one tablespoon of the dye. So maybe if I get one tablespoon, that's already less. Pour a bunch out, and so that's just a tiny amount. And why don't we try that? So that was not exactly a scientific measurement, but I would say we've got less than half of a tablespoon. So, and that already looks, you know, the first one looked opaque. This one definitely, definitely does not. Once again, I have my bare yarn. I'm gonna plunk it in and swirl it around and hope that I get some reasonable coverage on the yarn before all of the color strikes. Um, and actually, that is not bad. I'm expecting there'll be a little more tonal variation in this skein than the other one, just because there is a lot less dye to absorb, but we've definitely got a nice pastel color. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and leave this in the pot for 10 minutes. 
I was nearly positive that the water was going to be clear, given that um, we started off with something that was, you know, it was basically clear from the get go. So, the what's the concentration difference? Maybe it's close to a one to four. I did not measure out, I could have gotten a smaller spoon, but I did not measure out how much of the dye um, there was between the palest shade and the more medium shade. But here we had two tablespoons, here we had less than half. So, for the darkest shade, why don't we go for, let's try four tablespoons. Uh, let's go with five tablespoons of dye. All right, let's measure this out. We've got one, two, three, four, five, and oh, I didn't quite kill it. I was really kind of hoping that in this project I would use up all the color, but for that it probably would have been helpful to mix some um, dye stocks for each of them to get some like good proportions, etc. But nevertheless, I am really excited and let's go get our yarn. Rebecca, why whenever you do deletions are you using some kind of blue-green? That has seemed to be a theme for a bunch of these videos. I'll put links to some of the others in the video description. Anyway, let's add our third skein of yarn. Just kind of plop it in, add it in, and wiggle, wiggle around. It's actually really fun to see this forest green color on its own. It definitely reads fairly blue, more so than like a green. It looks like a very, very deep teal. Um, and I'm not sure, hmm, I'm not sure if I ever did it at all or not. But either way, I'm going to turn up the heat a tiny bit, and we are going to go ahead and leave this for 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, there is still some color here in the pot. Not a lot of color, considering where we started, but that's still some color, and yeah, I'd like to absorb it. So I'm going to go ahead and add a super, super scientific splash, and two splashes of vinegar. Um, I would say, I don't know what a good estimate for how many tablespoons are in a splash, probably at least two, but I'm going to leave this on low heat for another 10 minutes. We are only a couple minutes in and we have cleared this besides maybe a tiny bit of a yellow tinge. I'm going to go ahead and leave this in the pot a little while to start cooling down, but I think that and if we compare that yarn to the other two that we dyed already, we will have a really, really nice gradient set. As for the remaining dye, I diluted a tiny bit to rinse out the container, but I added it to a tulip tie-dye squeeze bottle, so that way I can save it for a future Leave No Dye Behind video. Today's project was functionally like doing serial dilutions. Except instead of, say, a dilution, we are just adding different amounts of the stock solution. But there's an approximate one to four ratio of the dye in between each stage. We definitely, though, have a gradient here. But they do feel like equivalent steps up. And so now we have three skeins of yarn our water is clear, by the way, but we have three skins of yarn that can be combined for a number of different projects. I'm going to use a little bit of clear dish soap to see if we get any bleeding, but I'm not really expecting any. And yeah, I mean, you could use this with color work, um, and you could do like a full-on gradient or something. Um, there's a lot that can be done. And you could even start working and do this kind of technique with mini skeins versus full skeins. Um, a lot of people sell sets of mini skeins that have step functions. Step functions. It's not quite a step function. But a lot of people will sell mini skein sets that have um, varying shades of one tone or a gradient um, that would give you from tone to tone. 
So clearly, you know, we did this with just one color, but you can add another color in there as well to go from like a teal to a blue or something like that. Um, but there's a lot of possibilities. But anyway, since our water is clear, I'm gonna give this a final rinse, then go and hang up this hand to dry, and I'll be back with some final conclusions. Chemnitz family, I promise that someday I will do a gradient or fade type project and it will not be in a green or teal color. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I'm just, I'm just really, really amused that this is the direction that uh, this project went. Nevertheless, uh, we dyed three different semi-solid yarns today and these colors are each distinct and can mix, be mixed together in many different ways. Whether you want to do a fade or some kind of color work, they all have the same hue, but there's different levels of saturation, which is just a lot of fun. When approaching this project, I created the medium shade first. And I sort of went for what I thought would be a medium shade because if it ended up too dark, I knew that I would need to really scale back the amount of dye for the lightest shade and the reverse. If it ended up being really pastel, I knew that I needed to really up the saturation for the next two shades. Um, so rather than you know immediately going for the lightest shade, it could be harder for me to determine how much I wanna use for the darkest or vice versa. If I started with the absolute darkest, it could be a little harder for me to get something that was light enough um, for the lightest shade. When doing something like this, remember, you can always add more dye, so it is better to err on the side of too little dye than too much. One other way that you could go about this is you could mix a dye stock and then do some cereal dilutions, and that could help you make sure that you have a consistent step between each of the three or more colors that you are creating. I created this set with three 100 gram skeins of Knit Picks Wool of the Andes worsted weight yarn. Um, this gives us a total of 660 yards, and that is more than enough for a hat and mitten set. Uh, you could do a really nice scarf. This is a lot of yardage and you could do a lot with it. Um, if you would like to learn more about the yarn vase, you can find my affiliate link in the video description. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I hope that you found this video and my approach helpful. If you did, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube channel. In addition to more planned videos like this one, I love to just randomly throw colors and different types of dyes at yarn and to just see what happens. So that way you can learn from my mistakes, and I make a lot of mistakes, and my successes because sometimes things that I think might not work well end up turning into some of my favorite techniques ever. Did you know that you could bring home a little piece of Chemnitz? The Etsy store Chemnitz Creations is filled with yarn that has been featured in past and upcoming Chemnitz Tutorials YouTube videos. So you can watch me dye the yarn, purchase it, and then rewatch the video as you are knitting or crocheting with it. And then you, know, you really get to see exactly how your yarn was born. If you're a massive fan of Chemnitz but don't need any more yarn, there is some Chemnitz merchandise available. Uh, through Zazzle, I have some mugs and notebooks and fun stuff, and you can find a link to that in the video description. Thank you so much for watching, everyone.